Ash 2015 coverage from Orlando, Florida continues. I'm Thomas Baldrick. We're happy to have with us Dr. Jeffrey Weiss from the McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. Thank you, sir, for coming by. Thank you. So let's talk about novel therapeutics for thrombosis and hemostasis. In recent years, we've seen anticoagulation therapies progress beyond vitamin K antagonists and low molecular weight heparins to direct factor XA inhibitors. What new developments are there to prevent some of the issues with these? Well, I think we've gone actually to two lines of treatment. We've gone to new oral anticoagulants that include oral factor 10A inhibitors and an oral thrombin inhibitor. We now have four such agents available to us, and these agents are all licensed for stroke prevention in patients with atrial fibrillation and for treatment of patients with venous thromboembolism. And the major advantage of these new agents is that they're convenient to give, they're more convenient than morphine because they can be given in fixed doses without routine coagulation monitoring. And we've also learned that they're safer for the brain. There's at least a 50% reduction in the risk of intracranial hemorrhage with the new agents compared to warfarin. So that's huge. So we have more convenient agents and we have safer agents to manage our patients. How much of a game changer is that, do you think? Oh, it's amazing. If we focus on our patients with atrial fibrillation first, it's so much easier for them. They don't have to go to the lab to get their blood tested every week or every two weeks, and it's safer. And as our patients are getting older and older, safety to the brain is really important because the risk of intracranial hemorrhage goes up with age. And if we think about our patients with venous thromboembolism, we used to start them on a parenteral, that's an injectable agent, for at least five days, usually around seven days, and then transition them to warfarin. And these are younger patients, they, they, they're working, they, they want to be active. Now we can use all oral therapy to manage them right from the get-go, so it really streamlines transition of care. We send a lot of these patients home directly without even admitting them to hospital, or if they do come into hospital, they only stay for a couple of days, then they go home and it's very simple therapy. So it's huge. What can you tell us about the uh, presentation that you've got here at ASH? My presentation will talk about the new agents, and I'm just going to say that they're already licensed for stroke prevention and atrial fibrillation and for treatment of venous thromboembolism and for prevention of a venous thromboembolism after orthopedic surgery. But what are the next indications? And there are a huge number of studies going on right now to look at the utility of these new agents in patients with heart failure to see whether we can reduce mortality and cardiovascular death in heart failure patients to look at their use as either alone or in conjunction with aspirin for secondary prevention in patients who have coronary artery disease or peripheral artery disease. In patients with cryptogenic stroke, that's a ischemic stroke that we really don't know what the etiology of it is. So we're seeing all these studies going on, so I'm sure in the next two to five years we're going to have a whole host of new indications for these drugs. And then we've got new targets, drugs that affect new targets, and we're moving upstream in the coagulation system. These agents we've talked about target factor 10A or thrombin, which are right near the bottom of the coagulation cascade. We're targeting factors upstream in the intrinsic pathway, factors 11 and 12. Why these factors? Well, we've known for ages that factor 11 and factor 12 are not important for hemostasis, that's for bleeding. Factor 12 deficient patients have no bleeding. Factor 11 deficient patients, they don't spontaneous bleed, they can bleed with surgery or trauma. So we knew that these were safe targets, but we just didn't know whether they would be effective. But in recent years, we found from epidemiologic data that people who have factor 11 deficiency are protected from venous thrombosis and from stroke. People with high factor 11 levels have an increased risk of these problems. 
And we've learned from animal models that if you knock out factor 11 or factor 12, thrombosis is attenuated. So these two factors, now we know that they're very important for not the initiation of clotting, but the stabilization and growth of a clot. So if we can inhibit them, we have the potential to attenuate thrombosis without causing bleeding, and that's really the holy grail of anticoagulation therapy. And just earlier this year, we did a study in patients undergoing knee replacement surgery where we used an antisense oligonucleotide to knock down the levels of factor 11 before the surgery. And we showed that compared with the standard of care, a low molecular weight heparin prophylaxis, knockdown of factor 11 significantly reduced the rate of post-operative venous thrombosis without increasing the risk of bleeding. So it's a very, very promising area of research, particularly in patients who have a high risk of thrombosis but also have that high risk of bleeding. Great progress continues. Right. Best of luck with your presentation. Thanks for joining us.